Look Outreach is underwritten by the generous support of Munter Enterprises. Family owned and operated since 1972, integrity is important as our family name is on every project. Our word is our bond. Munter Enterprises. Just build it. Welcome back, everybody, for part two of my interview with Rachel Sieber. Rachel just loves the camera. I just, I just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could tell our viewers how excited I am to be in front of the camera. I'm not. <laughs> uh, very, very, uh, very self-facing humor there. Okay? Yes, yes. Uh, it, it's great to have you back, nice. Rachel. Um, you've been involved in public service, really, most of your adult life. Mm -hmm. And uh, people see you, you know, as supervisor in law at large, you know, and, but they don't know the background. Uh, sure. It's very impressive. Let's go back Thanks. to working with Kate. Sure. Okay. Um, I met Kate in 2000. We both started in Glens Falls City Court together, and uh, she was our prosecutor assigned, and I was the victim's, victim's advocate in the court. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I learned so much during that time of my life. She eventually became the district attorney, and I was appointed under Sterling Goodspeed. And Kate and I grew a crime victim program together. We developed our crime victims annual breakfast that I'm sure mm. you've attended. And we've been able to really honor those people who make such an incredible difference in the lives of victims. Kate, actually, I think I, I've shared with you before, probably gave me one of the very best pieces of advice anyone ever has, which was, uh, don't do anything that you're not comfortable with on the front page of the paper tomorrow. And <laughs> I live my life by that. I always have. I believe in transparency mm. and honesty. And I worked with her and developed that program for about four years and had an incredible opportunity. I was very honored to be appointed to the United States Attorney's Office for the Northern District. Mm -hmm. I spent eight years there working with victims and witnesses of crime. I mm -hmm. uh, ran an emergency witness assistance program. But at times, my caseload swelled to over 30,000 victims, and we were able to uh, effectively advocate for rights and services for victims of crime. I sat on a national response team, and uh, you know, just four years ago, I, ran, I left the U.S. Attorney's Office. I've started teaching for a couple uh, SUNY schools in mm -hmm. victimology and criminal justice as an adjunct professor. I own my own business, and I represent the taxpayers and the residents of Queensbury and the Warren County Board. Uh -huh. You know what? It's probably why, you know, the, uh, personal observation, you know, I watch you in the supervisor meetings, and of course, we've known each other for a few years now. Uh, you're very outspoken, and uh, it, it sounds to me, that's a very, I think, a very interesting background. Thank you know, because you bring something to public office that has the experience of being directly related to those people mm -hmm. you represent. Now, when you're in a victim's unit, you're, mm -hmm. it's a, that relationship is, is a tough one. Right. Now you move into a relationship where you have that background. Mm -hmm. What do you want to add? What do you want to bring right. to the picture? I believe we can always work harder. I believe we can always do better. And I think in Queensbury, we can do better. I believe, though, that we need to be able to effectively advocate for our taxpayers in the same way that I did victims of crime. Many people in our community aren't quite sure who to pick up the phone to yes, and call. Right. Right. How to, it's okay to ask for help. Many times I tell people, I'm okay with being just an information desk, really. You know, call me anytime, at any hour, knock on my door, shoot me a text, visit me on Facebook, and ask me what Ever you would like. I am committed to that open government. It's an open door policy and transparency. So I really believe that the people in Queensbury, they don't elect their um, officials to sit on the sidelines. They want someone who has their back. Mm -hmm. They want someone that understands every dollar they earn is a hard earned dollar and we aren't going to spend it friv friv frivolously. Yeah, right. <laughs> we are going to make sure that we're accountable. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think that's really what it comes down to is people want that accountability, but they want to be able to get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. They want to know that you care. And I do. I, I wholeheartedly care. And I think my management style is one that's different, is one that I believe in not only being able to be accountable, the buck stops with me, but also being able to delegate, to recognize experts in the field, mm -hmm. to listen to them. You will never hear me say I'm the smartest girl in the room. Mm -hmm. You'll never hear me say I know everything about a topic. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really important that we talk to people and we listen to them and we recognize where their strengths and weaknesses. Well, you know what? I, uh, I was looking at the card that you're giving out sure. when you're going door to door. Yeah, yeah it's that uh, season. And uh, transparency and approachable were mm -hmm. the two words that 
struck me about yeah. that and passion. You know, uh, it does require that kind of output. That's a that's a lot of work, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, you know what? Uh, if you go back on on management style, sure. how would you dif you differentiate yourself? Uh, what you're kind of inferring there is that you know you're not yeah. a micro manager. Yeah, no. You know, managers. From my experience, managers, you can be trained, mm -hmm. but management is a skill. Mm -hmm. It's a natural skill. Right. Is that what you see? Well, you know, I really, make no mistake about it, I pay attention to all the details. Um, the checks and balances are there. But at the same point in time, our, our the way Queensbury is set up is that you elect one town supervisor in the town, and then you elect your council. And those council members come to the table with experience and knowledge and a skill set. That's why people elected them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that you work together as a team to, act, to represent your taxpayers. So mm -hmm. um, I would like to bring back committee chairs. I'd like for us to have that implemented in the town of Queensbury, very similar to how other towns operate yeah, sure. and to how the county operates. Mm -hmm. And I think that really leads to good government. Uh, I, I believe in being very respectful and treating people with dignity when they're at a meeting, they're taking time out of their own schedule to come and to listen and to provide input. The public is so important mm -hmm. and uh, it's time that we treat them in a, the manner which they deserve to be treated, which is respectfully. Mm, I got it. Uh, well, this is just the beginning of the process. Uh, welcome to come back a number of Thanks. times. I'd like to invite you and John Stroud to come on Absolutely. and do a forum here and discuss some of these issues in more yeah. detail. Uh, but uh, congratulations, and uh, really, my, my compliments to you. You're very involved. I love watching you in these supervisor meetings. <laughs> if it needs to be said, Rachel says it. <laughs> <laughs> And you like the camera, don't you? I, I really <laughs> the have reason to say I'm saying the that is that she hates friend. the camera. I, I know. <laughs> should, Despite whatever rumors are out there, I really don't like the camera. Like well, no. I can tell you that, uh, no. that you, you, really, you do a great job. <laughs> Thank Rachel. you. I Thank appreciate you. it. All right. Uh, we've got to stop the interview. Okay. Um, I'll see you again. <laughs> to see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.